What happens next when Festus comes? That's what we're going to find out in X-25. Well, then, three days after Festus arrived into the area, he went to Jerusalem from Caesarea, because again, Caesarea is going to be the port, and the chief priests and the main men, the main leaders in Jerusalem, still angry about Paul. I mean, how many years? It's been two years, and they are still livid that Paul is still living on this earth. They meet up with Festus, and they tell him, this is all the things that Paul has done. You ever had that situation where a sibling tries to run home and tell mom what you did first? Well, that's what they're doing. They're going to hijack Felix right there at the beginning and say, we want you to send him to Jerusalem because they were planning on killing him on the way. They wanted to get to Paul right away. I mean, this is a grudge, right? They wanted to fulfill this removing Paul from this earth because they were that mad about the whole situation. And you probably see why, because he was one of them. It's easy for one of these, you know, dingy fishermen to become a follower of Christ. But for one of our own, one of our leaders, I mean, he was given the whole job of bringing back Christians to Jerusalem to be tried and killed. And now he turned on us. So they're even more mad than probably just regular Christians made it. Festus said to Paul, in, who was being kept in Caesarea, lovely place to be kept. If I had to be kept someplace, Caesarea would be prime location to be. And it said that he himself intends to go to Jerusalem too. So because Festus was trying to protect the rights and the Roman citizens, and probably wanted to, to be paid off too, he rejected the, the whole situation, refused to grant the, the, what the Jewish leaders asked. Probably too, because he knew what was going to happen. Probably Felix warned him what would happen if you let him alone. They've got to kill him. They're really mad. So it says that if you noticed in chapter five, he said, let the man of authority you go among you go down with me. If there is anything wrong with this man, let them bring the charges against him. So he's not even convinced that he did anything wrong. Again, probably Felix told the whole deal. But Festus understood that this was a plot. It says he stayed uh, eight to 10 days and went to Caesarea and took the seat of the tribunal and ordered Paul be brought. And when Paul came, the Jews who had come down from Jerusalem stood around and, again, started bringing all these charges against him that they couldn't prove. And Paul argued his defense. It's one of Paul's strength, right, to be able to argue with people. He's like, it's not against the law of the Jews, nor against the temple, nor against Caesar. I haven't committed anything. I haven't done anything wrong to any of these. And Festus, it says, wishing to do the Jews a favor, said to Paul, well, do you want to go up to Jerusalem and be tried on these charges before me? You know, well, I'll go and you can be tried. And he says, you know what? I am standing before Caesar's tribunal and where I ought to be tried. To the Jews, I've done no wrong. You saw that yourself. And so what have I done? What wrongdoing have I done that deserves death? I do not seek to escape death, but there's nothing I did. I didn't do anything. So I want to appeal to Caesar. I want to go and talk to the main guy. And so Festus conferred with the council and says, okay, well, you appealed to Caesar and it says, Caesar, you shall go. Well, that's exciting, right? Again, Paul is moving up and to the people he gets to talk to. So now it says that some days had passed, so we have a little time. And Agrippa the king showed up. I wonder if he was an official king or just called himself king, but he is going to be Herod Agrippa the second. This is going to be Herod Agrippa the first son. This is going to be the son of the person um, who put James to death, who started all of this at the very beginning when we first started martyring people beyond Jesus. His uncle would be Antipas, who beheaded John the Baptist, tried Jesus. So this is the whole Herod family, right? Goes all the way through this whole piece. And Agrippa the king and Bernice arrived in Caesarea and, and said hi to Festus and stayed there for many days. Festus laid Paul's case before the king and said, you know, this guy was left to me by Felix. So I went to Jerusalem and I talked to the elders and they laid out their case and asked me to condemn him. But I said it was not our custom to give up anyone accused being able to make his defense and brought him up. And I sat on the tribunal seat and we talked about it. When his accusers came, they brought no charges of such evils. 
meaning they, they couldn't prove their point. They couldn't prove what they were saying to me. This was a dispute within their own religion about Jesus, who was dead, and Paul, who asserts, who says he's alive because of this resurrection. That's what's making him so mad. And I don't even know how to investigate this. I'm not Jewish. I don't care about any of this. This is some sort of religious squabble. So I asked him if he wanted to go to Jerusalem. And Paul says, no, I want to be appealed to Caesar. So Agrippa said to Festus, well, I'd like to hear this man himself. So, you know, oh, that's fine. Tomorrow you get a chance to hear him. So again, Paul's stature of who he's getting to talk to is going up. Now, here's the interesting thing is Bernice was his sister. Oh, boy. And living with him as his wife. Goodness. All right. So the next day, Agrippa and Bernice came, it says, with great pomp, you know, celebration, honoring, you know, this is big to do. And Festus brought Paul out and said, this is King Agrippa and all of us, we want to hear about this whole thing, about the Jews who petitioned me, both here, both in Jerusalem and here, all this shouting. And, but I found he did nothing that deserved death. But since he wants to appeal to the emperor, I decided to go ahead and send him. But I, I don't know what to write about this. I don't even know how to describe what this appeal is about because all of this. So I'm asking you, King Agrippa, if you can kind of sort this out. Because remember, King Agrippa being part of the Herod family, that's going to put him as part of the Sadducees, who at least would have some understanding. The Herod family was not Jewish by birth. They were Edomites, but they became Jewish because Jews lived in the land of the Edomites, controlled the land of the Edomites, and so through that process became Jewish. So Agrippa would probably know a good deal about it. And I think it's interesting because I've kind of slammed some of the Herod family before. This guy seems kind of interested. He wants to hear what's going on and really kind of understand what is happening. Some people even kind of slam Festus at this point because according to Roman law, this has nothing to do with Roman law. He shouldn't have to be so concerned about what is happening in the Jewish faith or why these people are so mad at him when this clearly is a religious squabble. But anyway, he decided to appeal and ask Agrippa's help. So Agrippa is going to hear from Paul himself and find out what's really going on. And, and this is a reminder, who is Caesar right now? That's Nero. It's interesting because Nero considered himself to be a god. He was in charge of the entire religion. So this is going to be a problem when we say Jesus is Lord, because right now Nero thinks he's God. This is going to get interesting. What I'm going to meditate on is how confused I guess the Romans are about what they should do in this case. I suspect that they probably knew what happened with Pontius Pilate, that Pontius Pilate put Jesus to death. I had a very similar situation to this where a man was upsetting people, causing upset and the Jews wanted Jesus dead, but should we really put Jesus to death for this? I don't know. I don't think so. And so now we're in that same situation again. Now Rip is a king and he has that same situation. And I think they don't want to make the mistake. But it's interesting, again, how Paul keeps rising in ranks of who he gets to talk to. And what I'm going to pray about is the fact that everything does work within God's plans, even if it looks very dire. This whole situation is messy, but you know what? We've had Felix and now Festus make sure that nobody kills Paul. Paul's time is not over yet. And even though it takes unbelieving people, and in one case, Agrippa too, who is married to his sister, they don't believe in God. They're not doing this out of godly reasons, but you know what? God protects people in whatever ways he has. I'm going to pray about how everything just comes in the right order when it comes to what God wants. And what I'm going to share with others is this idea that even in the case where someone is falsely accusing you, help might come in the unlikeliest of places, even people who aren't really necessarily for you. So you should stand tall knowing that God can send help through any corner of the situation. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening. Boy, these chapters got short, didn't they? And remember, if you would like to listen to some of the other podcasts I have, Buzz Blossom and Squeak talks about God's amazing nature and the systems that God created. He just didn't create, but the, the amazing systems that God created to perpetuate life. It's just stunning how awesome the, the natural world around us is. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful day.